Welcome back. We are still with Beth Hoban from the USA and we are talking to her about her life in the Philippines. But before we go into what she does and what she loves doing, I still want to get some things out of the way about America. Mm. So we'll talk to Beth. Beth? Okay. I want to ask you something else. Uh, people across the world know America. Mm -hmm. They understand America from, from Hollywood, from CNN, from all the TV, uh, star, um, TV shows. Mm -hmm. So there's not really much that's hidden about America. Mm -hmm. But I looked it up and there was this issue. I understand that uh, America is called the land of the free. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yes. Now, is that the reason why there are so many divorces in America? <laughs> She's asking. Well, I wouldn't be able to comment on that because I'm happily married, celebrating 10 years this September. Well, it's also known as the land of the brave. Mm. Is that right? Yes. So uh, I understand most of these divorces go back into remarriage. Is that why it's known as the land of the brave? I would, I would like to think we're brave on a number of other fronts, but I think anyone who has the courage to come and stand before God and, and their witnesses and all of their friends and commit to so making a commitment to each other, I think, that, commitment again I think that takes courage, definitely. Okay. I don't think that's what the Founding Fathers had intended. But they didn't have that in they mind. They didn't okay. have that in mind. But. Now tell me about REACH. Okay, REACH you. REACH. What is REACH? REACH Youth is an organization that I've um, been fortunate to work with for the last four years here in the Philippines. It's a Makati-based organization that really reaches out to, to street children. And they reach out to the children that, unfortunately, the city has, has um, that a lot of times you drive past in your car and you forget about. And they have uh, two, base, two programs. One is a Saturday feeding program, and the other is actually a, a daycare program, which is run this Monday. This is just in Makati? This is just, well, they're primarily, they service individuals in Makati, but they also have um, outreach in Mindanao and also up in Baguio and other, other areas throughout, throughout the Philippines. Who, who founded REACH or where does REACH originate from? REACH what are the roots of REACH? REACH, um, REACH actually started out as a drug rehab uh, program working here. with adults and teenagers here, here in Makati. So it's a local... Back in the, uh, back in the 80s, right. It's, it's a locally funded piece that's affiliated with um, a number of, of churches here. And really the concept was is we, we have an issue and, and challenge and they started off again reaching individuals that were affected by drug use and what then they started to learn was that well it's more important that we reach people before they become or they turn to drugs. Before they turn. And that was when the, the shift turned and they actually started with, with reaching out to, to school aged children and providing them a warm meal and providing them support and encouragement. Um, so it's just a Filipino group, it's not it's a global group? just a Filipino group, group. Yeah. it's not a global group, although it is, they do have support from other organizations around the world through different churches and foundations um, that support them from Sweden and the United States. What? It was my oldest son, Connor, uh, who is now seven, but when, he, when we arrived, he was three years old. Wait, hold, I, do, I do have pictures of him. Yes. I hope you don't mind that no, I flash no, no, him in a fine. while. I'll ask him to flash it. Okay. okay. So Connor. Uh, and so Connor says to me one, one day, we're out at the store, and we had gone up to... Uh, this is in the neighborhood well, This is in uh, the Rustans in the Makati area. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. Some young children came up to him ab about our age and, and were asking for money. It was really close to Christmas, our first Christmas here. And, and he was asking me, Mommy, well, what is it that they want? And I was like, oh, oh well, they're asking oh, for right. money and, and for food and trying to explain it. And, and he looked at me with these very innocent but very old, I would call it old soul eyes. Old soul eyes, okay. And he goes, Mommy, some of them don't even have houses. And, and I was really touched by that, that at three years old he was very aware of it. And, and uh, I said, yes, uh, you know, that's correct. And would you like to do something to help them? And he said, yes, yes, I would. And we had um, gone and, and gotten some purchases and, and made some donations. And, and he said, well, that's not enough. I want to do more. And oh, wow. at that point in time, they were building a big uh, apartment building next to our... Reach. Reach. No, no, no. This is just in general. In our neighborhood, there was... This is just my son, and he said, um, "Mommy, I want to." Who wanna... was building an apartment? Well, just, just it was People. just construction, People. just okay, construction. Okay. But my son goes, "Mommy, I." like that building next door I want to build an apartment for all of these for these poor people for these poor yeah. people so that they have a place to live and and then he looks and he says well mommy it'll take me a long time you know I'm, I'm just one boy and then he asked for a dump truck and a, and a real crane for Christmas that year we were on a building phase um, but at that point in time I was really touched and I, I said well Connor it'll take a long time and and he just looked at me and he says well maybe they should come stay with us you know we have so much mommy I can share and wow. to hear that come from, from a, a three-year-old at that time really, really touched me. And it really made me realize that, you know, I have a real opportunity here, not only personally, but with my family to really encourage them to recognize people as individuals and to really reach out to them. 
and, and have an opportunity to give back, which then I became a volunteer at Reach Youth. And it's not just me going out and volunteering, I, I you bring this. my family. I want to tell you this, besides having kidded you about uh, being the land yeah. of the free and the land of the brave, it's also my belief. Mm -hmm. I go to America very often. Mm -hmm. It's a land of abundance. Yeah. Uh, people are givers in America. Mm -hmm. So your child is a living proof of that. Connor is a living proof of that. Bet. So in four years, boy, you've accomplished a lot and you've been through in and out of this country. You've had Balot, you've had Isao, and you've sung a karaoke, and you helped a lot of kids out. <laughs> tell me about your work. What makes you the professional, the wonderful professional that you are? Uh, for me personally, I, I love my work. I love working with people to help them connect with, with their passion. You describe your work. You know, I've heard about coaching. And to me, it's really a wake stuff. What mm. the heck is coaching? What is coaching? Why, yeah, why do I, why do I need that? a coach? You know, I'm not playing basketball. And no, not why you need one. What is it? What is it? And yeah. Well, coaching is a relatively new profession, and a number of individuals think that coach is like a basketball coach. Okay, I need someone. He's not? No. No, okay. no, I'm not a basketball coach. Not yet. Um, but coaching really works with individuals to help them maximize and reach their full potential. Well, what does that mean? I what does that know, mean? Maximize my potential? Am I not living my life to the hilt? Am I not doing okay? I don't or know, do are I, you? I don't know. <laughs> uh, you tell me. How do you figure that out? Well, I think it's, it's not a question about a coach coming to somebody with the answers. It's about really being very strategic and helping people ask the right questions. How, how would you highlight the, let's not call it the flaw, mm -hmm. let's call, how, would, how do you highlight the need to change? How do you extract that? Saying that, hey, things are not working well for you at work mm -hmm. and here's what you need to do. How do you extract that mm -hmm. data out of that person? What, are the, what is the process you follow? Well, the process that I follow is, is really more of an appreciative inquiry with working with individuals saying, okay, you're not broken. Let's look at what is working and what are the lessons that we can learn from that. Um, that's and, usually the, the... And people open up and say... And people open up. Um, the first question I love to ask any of my clients is looking back on your last two to three years, what is it that you're most proud of? And so I should have asked you that question. You what are you most proud of? I'll hold that question for the Okay, you hold that question for the end. I have yeah, a, great, okay. a great answer for you. But I love that question because when you ask someone what they're most proud of, their whole body language changes and they Jeez. relax. Because Can you ask me that, see what happens? Sure, you. let's ask. Yeah. So what am Raju, I most proud of? Raju, looking back on your professional experience for the last two to three years, what are you most proud of? My body language changed? You did haven't come up with your answer no, yet. No, but did my body language change right away? You haven't started your answer. That's when, that's when the body language changed. In the changed. last couple of years, what am I most proud of? There was a time mm -hmm. that I trained a bunch of 70-something Filipinos mm -hmm. in Naga City. Okay. For two hours, I worked with their branding, business development, and I spoke in Tagalog. Mm. And I am most proud of that moment. Okay. What so is that good? Is it good? That's good. Yeah. Wait. How many in two people, years. how many lives have you touched in such a way mm. in the last four years in the Philippines? How many people have many. you had an effect on? Um, that's hard to say because I've, I've done a, a series ballpark. of... Uh, ballpark. I would probably say a few hundred. Um, Ooh, yeah, I've wow. had a chance in to really... In four years? In four years. Uh, and this is one-on-one -on -one coaching? One-on-one -on -one tra coaching, but also, also, also through training. Through training. But one-on-one? -on -one, huh? one one-on-one, I would probably say, I would say upwards of 100 people at least. Wow, that and, is pretty good. And it's, it's, it's good you know, and there's coaching moments. Someone doesn't always have to be your client to have a coaching moment. You know, it can be that conversation in passing where... And then bang. And then bang, where you can say to someone, you know, you really are a powerful person and I believe in what you're doing and even just an encouragement. And I think for me that's been the most rewarding part is preparing to leave, having I, I a lot of... I have a bunch of friends who are yeah. also coaches and in, when we were doing this, mm -hmm. sorry, to I forgot to no. mention that I'm a coach too. Yeah. So we call it the PUSA. The PUSA. The okay. PUSA. The, when the cat pops out of the bag and this is a cat that's brilliant, bright and beautiful mm -hmm. and we capture that cat. And then we nourish her. So mm. when the pusa appears out of the bag, absolutely, there's a time you create the turnaround. Absolutely. Great. So you've been happy with this, and you're going to take this away to the next country you're moving into. Absolutely. We're moving to Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Personally, I'd just like to say thank you for having the last four years be a really amazing experience. I've met so many people that have really um, been a part of our lives and have really touched my heart personally and professionally. And I look forward. I'm not going to say goodbye. I'll just say until next time.